I'm a volunteer with Nature Kids. Um, my background is in childcare. I've been running an outdoor sports camp for children back in Ottawa for the past five years. And I moved out here to Vancouver in October. And I'm so excited to learn more about this beautiful and unique environment that we live in out here. Um, so I just wanna quickly go over a couple of things for this Zoom Explorer day. Um, first, we ask that everyone mute their mics. I think for the most part, everyone is muted already, um, just so that we can hear Joan, who is gonna be our educator today. Um, so Joan, Joan Lopez is a marine educator who has worked as an educator at the Vancouver Aquarium in the past. Uh, she's been employed as a wildlife guide with a local whale watching company since 2003. Joan loves all marine mammals as, and is excited to share her photos and knowledge of these amazing animals with us today. So welcome to Nature Kids, Joan. Um, Joan will be sharing her expertise on marine mammals with us. So if you guys have any questions as we go along, feel free to write them in the comments um, and I'll do my best to, to try to share them with her and have some answers for you. Um, now, I also just wanted to say that this, um, this Zoom meeting will be recorded for future use for Nature Kids. So if you don't feel comfortable being recorded, um, just go ahead and turn your camera off. Um, yeah, so uh, if Joan wants to take it away. Okay, hang on, I will just, um, just go do that. try to do, get this. Okay, just a moment here, we'll just get that up and away and opening, whoops, opening slide wasn't up. Hmm. Okay, so it's going to be a couple of, hi everybody, by the way, thanks for joining in. Some of you might have a sunny day right now, so I really appreciate that you're, uh, that you're here to share this uh, with us. Uh, I'm really excited to share this with you. So I, I usually speak more with adults, so I'm kind of hopefully have made this good for children to take part and participate. Uh, there'll be a few places along the way where I might ask you to put something in the chat. And of course, we won't get to all of the answers, but um, we'll just kind of see how people respond to some of the things. But in some places, I may ask you to respond to something with the reaction buttons, which are at the bottom of your screen, it should be there. If you click on reaction, you have a thumbs up or a clapping sign. So I've usually asked for a thumb thing. And, uh, you know, I'm here today wearing my whale shirts and I've got my whale coffee mug. So I'm all ready to go. And uh, probably it's um, best if you guys also get rid of the little tiles on the side where people are speaking, because that way, uh, or where the little participant tiles are, if you can just minimize that because then you'll be able to see the majority of the pictures. Anyway, some of them might still be a little bit covered, but okay, here we go. So we're gonna be talking about today about some of the marine mammals of the Salish Sea. And uh, the Salish Sea is um, bigger than even what we see on this map. It, it continues all the way up to about Campbell River. Uh, but the main area that I work in, I come from Richmond, from Steveston is where our boat comes out of. And we mainly work in the Strait of Georgia, the Southern Gulf Islands, a little bit towards Vancouver Island, the San Juan Islands. And lately we have been going up into Howe Sound as well, which is kind of up there where my cursor is, is pointing. But for the most part, Strait of Georgia and uh, the Gulf Islands is where we do most of our work. All right. So we're going to start off. Sorry, Joan, can I just pause you there? Yep. Um, we can't see any slides or um, the map that you're talking oh. about. Okay, were you, were you able to see any of that? The front page? No? I can't see anything right now. And um, people okay. are mentioning in the chat that they can't see it either. Can't see it? Okay, let me try this again with the um, share screen. because that would be kind of a shame if we can't get that to work. <laughs> um, let's try again. We don't see anything. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Yeah, these things are. Uh, um, where do you want to share? Okay, we want to share this one. 
Oh. Okay. Ooh. Now are we seeing things? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Sometimes those share things just don't to work. Okay. Now we're good. There's the front page. So yeah, that's where you may want to minimize those little thumbnail videos on your left hand side. And okay, there we go. There's the map. Now you can all see the map. Okay. So kind of start, I start from Steve's, mm -hmm. which is in Richmond here. And we mostly work around the Strait of Georgia and kind of this area and a little bit up into Howe Sound. Okay, thank you for catching that before we went on too much further. Can anybody, everybody hear me okay? Yep, I, I can hear you fine. So okay. I think everyone else probably can. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to be yelling at the computer, but. Nope, sounds I want good. To be able to hear. Okay, <laughs> we'll start off with these animals, the pinnipeds or wing footed animals as they're known. So you look at the, where the little arrows are pointing here, the red arrows, you can see those big flippers or almost like wing feet that these animals have and that's what they use for mobility so on the true seals which our representation today will be harbor seals those are the ones on the left let me just get my little pointer out here laser pointer so that's these guys here and they have very very small front flippers as you can see and a little bit longer on the back right so when they're swimming they use their back flippers for swimming and then over on the right are the eared seals. So you can see little tiny ear flaps there. They're not really big, but they have little tiny ear flaps. And they have big flippers back and front. And uh, they mostly use their front flippers for swimming. The back ones are mostly for steering. So if you can imagine how a sea lion, this is a California sea lion here, how they would swim. Uh, imagine a bird flying, and you can kind of practice that at home if you want to try not to hit your computer or the person sitting next to you, but do the you know arms up and down flapping, and that is how a sea lion swims. The seals use their back flippers for swimming, and it's side to side, kind of like what a fish would do, and uh, so it's a little bit different the way that they swim, and they use their front flippers mostly for steering. So let's start off with the harbor seals. This is our most common most numerous marine mammal. You will find these all over the British Columbia coast, uh, pretty much anywhere where there's a place that they can haul out like this to rest. When the tide is low, you're probably going to find some harbor seals around. And they're really cute, right? They look like little stuffed animals or something. They're so pudgy and fat. So usually they kind of stay in one place for the most part. They're not really social. I don't think that they really care who's sitting next to them, but they like favorite hollows and they keep going back to them over and over again. Now the beauty about this kind of a hollow, a log boom, is that it doesn't go underwater at low tide. So it's always there and available for them. So humans have kind of given them an extra place to rest. Remember, they kind of like to stay around one neighborhood. Well, what happens when the tugboat comes and hooks up to the log boom, and hauls it away, then our seals are going for a little bit of a road trip or a boat trip. And sometimes they end up up rivers and they have uh, been known to be all the way up to Harrison Lake. If any of you have signed in from the Chilliwack area, uh, there are seals, harbor seals that live permanently in Harrison Lake and in Pitt Lake as well. So not always in the ocean for them, but usually, usually in salt water. So they're really cute, right? Look at those big eyes. But they don't really use their eyes to catch food. Instead, what they use is their whiskers because a lot of the food that they're trying to catch lives in deep water and it's dark, not always really clear and e easy to see in. So instead they feel around with their whiskers or they can feel movement of things swimming past them with their whiskers and that can help them to catch their food. So here's one that's caught a nice big salmon. They don't just eat salmon though. So I'm talking, if you want, type some suggestions in the chat box of what else do they eat besides salmon. So this one's a really nice big chum salmon that the seal has caught. Um, I think that salmon is uh, not quite as big as what this seal is, but almost. 
it's going to have to tear that one apart to eat it. But some of their food, they don't someone, do. Someone mentioned seaweed. Do they eat seaweed? Um, no, they don't eat seaweed. They're carnivores, and the seaweed is more like a plant. So the things that they would eat uh, would be other animals of some sort. Someone else mentioned trout or clams? Um, yeah, they'll definitely eat uh, things that are, well, trouts are kind of like a salmon, so they'll eat trout-like things. I don't know about clams. They'd have to break them open, uh, and I'm not sure their teeth are sharp enough for that, but maybe when they're small, they might eat small mm -hmm. clams. But what about another thing with uh, some bent legs that walk sideways? Oh, someone did say crabs. Crabs? Anybody say mm -hmm. squid? Nope, but someone said plankton or jellyfish. Um, they might eat jellyfish occasionally, but they will definitely eat things like squid. But the point is they eat a lot of fish that's not salmon. So you guys had some really good suggestions there. Got you thinking there'll be more questions coming up. Um, this is a picture of a walleye pollock. We don't usually see walleye pollock at the surface of the ocean. As you can see from here, this one already got bitten by something. And really it was at the surface for a little while and then it was gone. So I suspect a seal chased it up there. Uh, but they will eat fish like this and another kind of ugly looking fish that's called a hake. And a hake is a bottom dwelling fish. It lives really deep in the water. And a hake likes to eat juvenile salmon. So although the seals eat some salmon, they also eat predators of juvenile salmon. So things are kind of complicated. Nobody eats just one thing out there. Not, not typically anyways. So these guys also, I think seals have really good ab muscles, right? Their core muscles, their belly muscles in here and their back muscles have to be really, really strong because they lay around on rocks like this and all lifted up. So I like to say that seals do Pilates. And for those of you who don't know what Pilates is, it's exercises that are to strengthen your abdomen and your back, so your core muscles. So I think seals do Pilates. And sometimes they really get into it. Now, it was thought a long time ago when sailors would go to sea sometimes for years that they would see these things on the rocks and they thought they were seeing mermaids. Now, what uh, we now think they were seeing were seals hauled out on the rocks or maybe in the South Pacific dugongs uh, that can do this. So if this were a Pilates move, would you call it mermaid? Yeah? <laughs> you can give a thumbs up to that one if you think mermaid would be a good name for that Pilates pose. So seals are really, really cute when they're babies. And mums can have a pup pretty much every year uh, from the time they're about three or four years old one pup every year. So uh, these pups are quite independent. Now I've got a little true or false statement here for you. I'm saying that pups can swim at birth and that they might even be born in the water. So you give me a thumbs up if you think that that's true. So mums will leave their pups for, oh, maybe even up to a day at a time. Uh, while well, they go to find food, and if the water level comes up, if the tide comes up, the pup just swims. So what do we say, what does it look like, Devin? Do we have some thumbs up on that one? Um, mostly false. Mostly people have typed in false. Really? No, that actually is true. Um, mm. Pups are so independent, right from the time they're born, they can swim. And, you know, mom only spends about six weeks with them, maximum six, maybe eight weeks, and that's it. That baby's on its own. So they are some of the most independent uh, little marine creatures out there, especially for marine mammals. Now I'm gonna take a little pause there and see if anyone has questions yet in the chat about the seals. Someone had mentioned earlier um, regarding what food they eat, and they asked if they eat mud sharks. Oh. You know, I'm guessing that they probably would, especially if the sharks are smaller sharks, 
I think that uh, to be a seal and to survive, you have to have quite a varied diet. So pretty much whatever you can catch. And that includes things like um, squid and octopus and crabs and all kinds of fish from herring to salmon. And I wouldn't be surprised if they would go after small sharks, skate as well when they're small. Um, someone else also just asked how old do, how long do seals live for? That's a really, really good question. Um, it's thought that they live in the wild for about 15 years or so on average, but females live longer than males in general. Mm. And can, how can you tell the difference between a male and a female seal? Ah, that is a really, really good question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to back up a couple of slides here. Um, if it has a pup beside it, then we know for sure it's a female. Um, this one is probably a female because we're not seeing any sort of round spot there in the belly. Um, oh, I guess I didn't put up a picture of a male. Um, if it were a male, it actually has a little like round opening right about here. <laughs> um, oh, maybe this one is. It's right about there. Uh, so when, yeah, when... <laughs> when they go pee, and I don't have any pictures of seals going pee, but one of my <laughs> colleagues does. Um, for males, it actually comes out of that little opening uh, in the middle of the belly. And for females, uh, let's go back to this female. For a female, it would be down on this lower area here. So yeah, other than, unless if you see the belly, get a good look at it, or if you see it with a pup, um, you know, then you know it's a female, but otherwise it's pretty hard to tell. Mm. The males might have be another a bit larger, but it's, you know, that's kind of a size comparison thing. It's pretty hard to tell. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have another question. How long do baby seals drink their mother's milk for? Only about six weeks. And at that point, they're weaned. So they've already been taught by that age how to catch fish uh, and other food and how to deal with the fish. I'm not saying they're good at it yet. Uh, but remember, mom's just going to swim away from them one day when they're about six to eight weeks old, never come back. So they have to be able to fend for themselves at a very, very young age. So they might get, might get six weeks of milk from mom. Okay. Um, I think last question, um, do they have the same partners throughout their life? Oh, I, that, that's a really good question. I would say probably not. Uh, that every year the, the father of, of the female's pup is possibly a different male. Uh, the males get quite um, competitive about showing off to attract females, usually in <laughs> August, uh, by slapping their back flippers on the water. They make a lot of noise doing that, and keep that in mind, because that's going to make a difference later on here in our talk. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's sort of female's choice. So these guys are kind of competing to show how strong they are. And then the female will choose uh, a male. Nothing saying it's the same one from year after year. Okay. Do we have time for more questions or do you want to move on to the next? Oh, you can take another question now. Okay. Um, someone asked if uh, seals are carnivores um, or herbivores. You already mentioned carnivores, I believe. That's correct. Yeah. They are carnivores. And also someone asked um, how many weeks, um, what is the gestation period? So how many weeks are they pregnant? Oh, okay. That's kind of a complicated question when it comes to <laughs> marine mammals, because um, the, sometimes with some marine mammals, they can um, implant the, the beginnings of the pregnancy, but it doesn't develop for uh, quite a few months. So the gestation might seem like it's longer than, um, than, than the productive part of it, I guess you could say. Uh, but generally speaking, the pups are born in about mm, June, July. And most of the mating is taking place August or so, end of July into September. Excuse me? Yes? Um, I can't, like you're glitching a little. I'm, I'm glitching. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Sometimes on these things, the um, the audio kind of skips in and out. Okay. Yeah, it could also just be an internet connection issue. Yeah, it said internet. 
Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, we well, that, yep, that was the last question, really, so we can move on to the next, if you'd like. Okay. Let's move on to sea lions. All right. These are the big guys, remember, with the long flippers that use their front flippers for swimming and their back flippers for steering. Now I'm watching. Good. <laughs> and, uh, and locally, we have uh, two different types of sea lions that you could see uh, along the British Columbia coast. Uh, the California sea lion is the sleepy one there on your left hand side. Usually they're darker brown and we only have male California sea lions in our area. We don't get the females because Excuse this me. is... Yeah? Um, the one after the sleepy one in the right, that's my favorite. Oh, okay. Do you want to maybe mute your microphone for now and then we'll take more questions and, and things afterwards. Okay. Yeah, if you have any if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the chat so that everyone can hear Joan when she's talking. Yeah, these guys are are pretty fun. They're some of my favorite animals to see as well. Of course, I like all of them, but these guys are, are really fun. Uh, so yeah, the California sea lions, their mating areas are south of us, down in um, from about central Oregon, south right to the Baja area of Mexico. Uh, but the males tend to roam around a bit. So we do get male California sea lions here. I uh, say so they're a darker brown color and the males have this little blonde bump on their head, usually called the sagittal crest. Uh, the stellar or northern sea lion is the larger sea lion here on your right, the one that's sitting more upright. Uh, they tend to be a more goldeny color in general. And uh, these guys get really, really big. Yeah. Maybe before I go to how big, I'll tell you that they also sound different, okay? The stellar sea lions kind of growl, kind of like bears or lions, but the California sea lions bark like, ar, 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 ar. I don't know if I did a good California sea lion. Maybe you can try doing a California sea lion at home. You did with really good. Lions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you did so, really so the, um, the stellar or northern sea lion here on your right, like I say, they can get really big. Uh, they can weigh up to about a ton. Now, how much is that? Well, that's more than a smart car. We looked this up yesterday. A smart car weighs about one and a half ton, or sorry, 1,500 pounds, so about three quarters of a ton. And the stellar sea lions can weigh up to a ton, especially in the spring after eating all winter. So we do see females here as well. Here's some females. And there's a pup, but this pup is about one year old by now. Uh, the pups are born during the summer. And when they're going to have their pups, all of the sea lions move to rocky offshore areas. So if you're up on northern Vancouver Island or up in the Prince Rupert area, Haida Gwaii, you might be close to some of these what we call rookeries, which is where they move to for the summer in order to have their babies. All right, so this little guy's really cute. You can see the females are uh, about one third the weight of the males. So they're quite a bit smaller than what the males are. Now in those rocky areas, the males fight for a good piece of property. But this wasn't in one of those offshore mating areas. This was right here uh, in Georgia Strait. So even though this is not a time when they have to fight for property, these guys just seem to fight all the time anyways. So in those mating areas, the better their property, the more females they can attract to come and have their babies there. And that's kind of a big deal for the boys to see how many girls like their real estate. Now, you don't mess around with these guys. Look at their teeth. Look at those. They're pretty dirty too, right? Ugh. These guys need a little teeth cleaning. Uh, but they've got really big teeth. And yes, they are carnivores as well. Uh, their skull is almost like a grizzly skull. So I sometimes kind of think of them as being water bears. No. But they're not always fighting. 
sometimes they have some real cute close moments like these two California sea lions that are doing a little nose touching there and just uh, getting really close. Okay, we have a little video for you here, which hopefully it'll run. Okay, I'm waiting to see the little video part come up. I don't know what's going to come up. Hmm. Okay, I did have a little video for you guys there, but it doesn't look like the controls are active, which is really too bad. Uh, because you would be able to hear the sea lions, uh, the stellar sea lions kind of roaring in the background there. But for some reason, video doesn't look like it's going to be a possibility on here after all. But that's okay. We've got uh, a little diving competition here with one of these big boys. So here he is diving into the water. And there's his landing. I want you to give his landing a score from one to 10. What do you think about his belly flop? Was it a good one? If you thought it was really good, give him like a nine or a 10. But if you thought that was kind of a bad landing, maybe only give him a one or two. I think if it was a dive, maybe a two, but for a belly flop, a 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> He's getting a lot, a lot of 10s, 9.9s. Oh, nine. someone gave a five. Wow. Well, I guess they were thinking of it as being more of a dive than a belly flop. <laughs> but someone sure gave a thousand. Wow. Lots of 10 out of 10s. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a pretty good job. Uh, nine. A nine, yeah. Nine. We <laughs> heard a lot of nines. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was a good belly flop too. It's too bad the video didn't show because it showed a much more elegant uh, dive than what this guy did <laughs> actually, but that's okay. So these are guys, despite their really big size, sea lions are really flexible and they can scratch the back of their head with their back flipper or underneath their chin. So if the seals, the harbor seals, do Pilates, I think these guys must do yoga, right? And maybe you'd uh, have a name for that yoga pose. Maybe sea lion, that might be a good one. But they also can do a little water ballet, right? A little synchronized swimming there for you as well. So just really, really flexible uh, and graceful animals, despite that really, really large size. All right. When they're sleeping or resting, sometimes they sit up, like all posed with their head back. And I don't know why they do that. It, it must be comfortable for them somehow to just kind of lean back and, uh, and let their head just sort of rest back on their shoulders. But when they're really sleepy, they just lay right down and oops, they drool a lot. So they're kind of messy. But sometimes they have other problems. Oops, look at this guy here. So what do you think the sea lion would be saying if it could talk? If you want, you can put uh, your own little idea there into the chat. <laughs> Anybody have any responses there on that one, Devin? Not yet. Not yet? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I think maybe he'd be asking. Oh, oh someone, someone said, can you pass me a tissue? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Exactly. He needs or someone help. else. Someone else said, I think he wants five more minutes of rest. <laughs> <laughs> I think he needs to be maybe quarantined that one, right? We all <laughs> oh, I think so too. Yeah, Self-isolation for that six sea lion. Okay, I think that <laughs> that is the last one on the sea lions. Let me just like do a quick, yes, it is. Okay, uh, so if anybody has any questions about the sea lions, we could kind of take a little break and do some questions if you like. No questions yet, but I'll let you know when they, when they okay. come in. All right. Uh, so sea lions are really cool. We don't really see them locally here very much uh, in the summer. Uh, it's more from fall to spring. And then in the summer, of course, they're on those more outer coast areas or the north coast, or maybe some of you have checked in from today. Someone asked, um, how do sea lions climb up the rocks where they oh. get to, uh, to rest? 
Yeah, they are really, really mobile on land because of those big flippers. They can kind of rotate them uh, to be able to walk on land. Then they're, they're not as fast as bears, but they do kind of walk a little bit bear-like on land, kind of, you know, shuffle from side to side a little bit, a little wobbly. So, yeah, I'm sorry the videos don't work. I managed to get them to uh, embed <laughs> into the talk, but then they simply mm -hmm. aren't, uh, aren't playing. So... Um, yeah. Unfortunately, you didn't get to see how they walk on land, but uh, it, it's kind of a, 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 a wobble a little bit back and forth, but they're quite agile, even climbing up onto mm. rocks. Good question. Yeah. Now, are they similar to seals where um, with their lifespan and what they eat? Um, yes, actually, they, uh, they are even more diverse, I would say, in what they eat. That means they eat more things than what seals do uh, because they will even, the, the big males will even prey on baby seals, believe it or not. Uh, so they really are a little bit even more carnivorous uh, and more varied in what they eat. Their lifespan is uh, it's similar. The females may be about up to about 20 years or so uh, in age, but the males, rarely make it between about 13, 14 years old. And scientists think it's because of all of this, <laughs> that they're so big and heavy that they probably get heart problems and that kind of thing, just from that extra bulk and from fighting mm. with each other. Yeah, that's a good question. And what about the snot in this picture? How, <laughs> how do they make so much snot was someone's question. I have no idea. It really is the only time I have ever seen a sea lion snotty like that. So I have no idea what was wrong with him. Um, other seals, which we rarely see here, called um, elephant seals, are really snotty seals. They're always like dripping, uh, it seems, and, and oozing stuff out of their noses and their eyes. But uh, th this is uncommon. There must have been something that was wrong with this guy. I don't think he's got allergies. So it, it must have, <laughs> he must have been sick. <laughs> you mm. see his big claws though in this picture here with his scratchy. You can see the yeah. got there on his flippers. Yeah. Um, now if we go back to try to uh, play the video, um, you might be able, if you turn the, the pointer off, your laser pointer, you might be able to play it maybe. Oh, okay. Let me try maybe. that. Maybe. We could just try that as a last, yeah. last ditch effort. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Oh, you're absolutely right. I turned off the laser pointer and, okay, here we go. Yay, it played. Great suggestion, whoever that was with the laser pointer. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was awesome. The volume, do you want to see it again? I'll turn the volume down a little bit. It was uh, up really high so you could hear the, the sea lions, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. And there we go. We'll try that again. Oops. Sorry. There it is. Okay, watch how elegant the dive is. All right, there you go. I think that guy might have gotten like a 10 out of 10 for his dive, but it was obviously a oh, yeah. one. <laughs> Someone said that dive was, I think, uh, a trillion out of a trillion. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a pretty nice little dive. But there you could see them kind of moving around a bit on land and uh, how they use their big flippers and you could hear them. Uh, they are a pretty noisy bunch, especially um, on land. They're noisy all the time. Okay, should we jump ahead to the whales section? Yeah, I think that's, we can skip ahead now. Okay, here we go. So we're going to talk a little bit about cetaceans now. Those are whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Uh, that's what cetaceans refers to. Uh, so, you know, basically the animals that have the blowholes at the back of their head here rather than, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, rather than having 
nostrils, like what uh, most animals do at the front of their, their face. <clears throat> Pardon me. So we've got uh, toothed whales, uh, which will be represented by our killer whales. And then we have baleen whales, which will be represented here with our humpbacks. Now, for any of you that read your Nature Wild uh, last summer, the summer of 2019, you're going to be experts on this. Okay, there's the same picture you just saw. So you'll know all about the humpback whales. So they're baleen whales, uh, and that's the baleen right there. The arrow is pointing towards the baleen, that hair-like stuff that's hanging from their upper jaw. And that's made out of the same protein as your hair and your fingernails. So you can kind of think of it as stiff hair or soft fingernails, if you can imagine uh, what that would be like to have that hanging from your upper jaw. But that's what they use to catch food. And not always, but sometimes when they're feeding, they come just shooting out of the water like this. And you see little fish are just all over the place there. Uh, that is what they mostly eat, is small schooling fish and krill. Krill is a little shrimp-like critter, uh, smaller than most shrimp and kind of soft. And they use that baleen to trap the food in their mouth. So they're going to gulp uh, food and water. You see these big the pleats in their throat that can expand and kind of balloon out to accommodate all of that water. But they don't want the water. It's salt water. Animals don't drink salt water, so they force the water out through the baleen. We'll go back here, picture again, out through that hairy stuff, and it usually kind of comes out the back of their mouth, and the food gets trapped in the hair. So for any of you with long hair, maybe some of you girls, maybe some of you little guys as well, uh, maybe you've been eating outside uh, at a picnic or something, and um, and next thing you know, your hair got into the food, right? And now you've got food trapped in your hair. Well, that's kind of uh, the way humpbacks eat all the time. In fact, all baleen whales use that baleen in one way or another to trap their food. All baleen whales have two blowholes as well. One, two. And that's uh, kind of unique to them. So it's like they have two nostrils that move to the back of their head. So with these guys, with the humpbacks, we identify them as individuals, not by looking at their face, but by looking at the underside of their tail, their fluke, as we call it here. And uh, each one is just a little bit unique. So this one is called zigzag up here. And we know zigzag is a female because she had a calf last summer, her first known calf. She's called zigzag because of those three little dots. They make kind of a, a zigzaggy pattern there, uh, or someone thought so. Uh, this whale over here on the right, Yogi, uh, is her number has a Y in it because about 50% of her fluke is white. And she was named by some school children up in northern Vancouver Island. They were shown this picture and they said, suggest a name. Now, for some of you younger folks out there, you might not know that Yogi was a bear. It's a cartoon bear. So the kids thought that this whale looked like a bear. And I think it actually looks that way on both sides. If you kind of think more polar bear and kind of head pointed up, and over here again, the head pointed up, the nose, the mouth, the eyes. So I thought Yogi was an absolutely perfect name for that whale. And then down here on the lower left is Splitfin. Um, and Splitfin has a Z in the number because it's mostly white, not completely, but mostly white. Now with humpbacks, we don't know if they're males or females, unless if we see, not for sure, um, unless if we see them with a calf, uh, but the other way, the, if it's calf, obviously it's a female, but if you ever hear the whale singing and you can tell which whale is singing, you know it's a male. So here's a little humpback whale song for you. Oops, just a moment. That should be playing.
There you go. So th that song, um, so it's only sung by males. It changes, oops, pardon me. Um, it changes every year. And all the males that end up in one area, say all the ones that end up in a certain part of Mexico or Hawaii, will all end up singing the same song. So let's see if this next video here will play. Here we go. And let's see if you recognize the whales in this picture, in this video. Zigzag. There goes Split Fin. Did you guys catch that? Should I play it for you one more time? I'll, I'll try to get rid of the volume on this one, first of all. There we go. That's why split fin is called split fin. Because that little damage there on the fin. So these uh, humpback whales also have these long pectoral flippers and the bones in them are almost like the bones in your hand and arm. So kind of the equivalent of your arm. And up on the top, uh, very often they have barnacles on them. So if any of you have been walking barefoot on the beach and you're walking over rocks with barnacles, it's like, ouch, 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 right? That really hurts. Uh, but humpback whales, I think deliberately let these barnacles grow here because that means that they have some weapons on their hands, right? If they slap something with those barnacles, that's going to hurt. So it's kind of the equivalent of our arms. So here you go, a little question for you. It's true or false that humpback pectoral flippers, that's what we call this, the pectoral flipper, are about one third the length of their body, so long enough to touch their toes. So give me a thumbs up if you think that's true. So how's it looking there, Devin? Do we have some thumbs coming up? Um, nothing in the chat. Let's oh, see it would be on the reactions. Sorry, guys. So, yeah, on the reactions. Hit the, the thumbs up in your reactions. If uh... mm. No? Okay. Sorry, I'm trying Please. to... Uh... There we go. Oh, yeah. There's some thumbs up. There are? Lots of okay. thumbs up. Okay. It's kind of a trick question, you guys. That's why I was like, mm, if you didn't put your thumbs up, that's okay. Part of it's... Mm, mostly thumbs up. Mostly thumbs up. They are about one third the length of their body. So just like our arms are about one third our body. But they can't touch their toes because whales don't have toes. Cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and porpoises <laughs> don't have any feet or back legs. So therefore they don't have toes. So sorry, that was a trick question. That was a good um, trick question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the way they get around is with those big tails that you saw lifting in the video. They have this very strong tail stalk uh, that moves that tail, the fluke, up and down, and that's how they motor around. So they don't have feet, they don't need feet, and therefore they don't have toes, but it also means that they are never on land if they're healthy. Right? If they're healthy and well, cetaceans are never on land because they don't have any back feet to move around with. So here we go. Here's a little bit of uh, a look at those big pectoral flippers. And sometimes they roll around and put both in the air. They're really flexible, as you can see in the picture on that upper right-hand corner there. So my choice of activity for the humpback whales is ballet, because I think these are like ballet arms. They definitely have flexibility and they can wave them around pretty good. But sometimes they get right into the air as well. And that is so exciting to see because this animal can weigh as much as a city bus full of people. It can weigh up to 40 tons. So that is an immense animal. And even as impressive as a breaching humpback is the splash when they land. All right, we'll take a little pause there again. And if anybody has questions about humpbacks, I would be- Yeah, we have a 
we have a couple questions. Okay. Well, first, I want to ask, why do they jump so high out of the water? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> not something that they do all the time by any means. And uh, there's probably as many reasons for why they do it as, you know, reasons why we clap our hands, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. You know, pure excitement or joy because they can um uh, to make a big noise um think about all those little fish that they like to eat if they can manage to scare the little fish into tight clumps like say your little sardines or herring rather than them all being spread around if they can scare them with a big noise into coming together into a clump it makes them a lot easier uh it's a lot easier for the humpback whales to be able to scoop up a whole bunch of them at one time but you know it could be okay. just a scratch an itchy spot on their back because a lot of times <laughs> when they breach they kind of roll and land on their back uh so <laughs> yeah it, it there could be lots of reasons getting rid of a okay. few particles they didn't want <laughs> oh that makes sense too now someone else asked if whales need to drink water to survive um they do need water just like all of us do but they can't drink the salt water around them just like we can't drink it nobody can really drink it uh not mammals so all of the water that they get is just from their food so all the little animals that they're eating the little fish and krill and so on have water in their bodies and that is sufficient for the whales for their water needs now remember they're not evaporating like what we are they live in the water um, they're not sweating they're not panting like some land animals do and so they uh, lose a lot less water than what we do as well. um, and do you know how fast they swim humpbacks not very fast that is a good question um, a humpback swims uh, about the uh, pace of an old fishing boat. So a pretty fast pace is about seven to eight, what's called nautical miles per hour. That would be uh, in the range of about 15 kilometers per hour. And that's when they're going fast. And these animals do migrate every year, pretty much every year. They will go to, the ones here in uh, British Columbia, will go to either Hawaii or to Mexico for the winter. That's where they go to have babies and to make babies. And then they come all the way back for food because although there's really pretty tropical fish in those places they are skinny fish skinny 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 and these guys need fish with a lot of fats in them like what herring and anchovy and sardines and so on have so okay uh, that, yeah it could take them a long time to travel on their migration that answers one of the other questions which was if they uh, do they live in the, these waters year round? So they're only around here in the summer? Uh, yeah, pretty much from about, uh, there were some, um, like right now I should be out on the water working, but uh, of course we're all <laughs> not doing those sorts of things this year. Uh, I had heard that there were already some in April that had arrived. And usually um, we're still hearing of them around till about December or so before they leave. But there's oh, a few wow. that have, yeah, there's a few that have stayed year round. I guess that they are either um, prior to reproducing or maybe post reproductive uh, interest. And they've, uh, they've stayed in BC waters for the entire winter. So mm. yeah, not 100% of them migrate. Okay. That's a good question because I did not bring that up. <laughs> And then someone, the last question we have is, uh, can they float on their backs? Um, yes, they can for a while. But of course, they have to get the blowhole up in order to the surface in order to breathe. But uh, yeah, sometimes they'll just uh, lay over on their backs and just wave their pectoral flippers in the air. So um, yeah, they can float on their backs for a little while. Okay. All right, shall we move on? Yes, I think so. Okay, so we're going to talk about now our last group. And remember, the, um, the killer whales were representing um, the other type, the, the toothed whales. Uh, some of you might know them as orcas, and that's from their Latin name, or orca part comes from. But usually I just refer to them as killer whales because I like to use common names for everything. So these guys are the ocean's top predator and the world's largest 
what? And some of you might know the answer to that already, but I'll give you a little clue. Um, it has something to do with their teeth. Oh, somebody said it out loud before I got to you. <laughs> I was going to tease you with it and say they have pointy interlocking teeth, just like a T-Rex, but they're not dinosaurs, obviously. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. They are the world's largest dolphin. And there you can see the pointy teeth uh, on this killer whale. Now, here's kind of a little fun fact for you kids. I bet at least half of you have a wiggly tooth in your mouth right now, don't you? One of those baby teeth that you keep playing with, with trying to run around, wiggle it back and forth because it's going to fall out any day. Killer whales, and I'm sure this is true of most dolphins, don't have baby teeth. The teeth that they have when they are babies just kind of grow to fit their mouth and they never lose their baby teeth. They don't have any baby teeth, so they never lose their teeth. But that means if they do break a tooth or lose a tooth when they're little, that's the way it will be for the rest of their life. They will always have a missing or broken tooth in that spot. So, you know, when you're little and, uh, and you have a good chance of maybe damaging a tooth, maybe it's a good idea to have a replacement come in, right? But these animals don't. So what do you think is in the mouth right there? And if you said fish, that's not the tongue. That is a piece of salmon that is in the mouth of that whale. It looks like a fillet of salmon. And because it's eating fish, we know that this is a resident, what we call a resident type killer whale, because this type of killer whale, this ecotype, only eats fish. And their number one favorite is Chinook salmon. So this is their favorite food, the fish, not the lady. Uh, and this is not my picture. I took this off the internet. So I don't know exactly how heavy this fish is, but it might be somewhere in about the 15 kilogram, 15, maybe tw up to 20 kilogram range, because I don't know how big she is. Uh, so it's a pretty good size Chinook salmon. We can tell it's a Chinook salmon from its big size and its black gums. But the record weight for a Chinook salmon is over 50 kilograms. Can you imagine a fish that size? That's bigger, that's over 100 pounds, if any of you are thinking in pounds. Um, that is probably bigger than what most of you are listening in today. So those fish can get really, really big. And uh, it kind of makes sense that killer whales would go for a really big fish because they share their food with their families. So there's no point in sharing a little thing like, you know, a herring. You want to catch something big so that you have lots to share. So that is the resident killer whales. And then there are the transients or bigs killer whales. And these guys are a little bit different. They don't eat fish at all. They eat, oh goodness, they eat all the other animals that we've already talked about today, the marine mammals. Now, remember those humpbacks, the uh, barnacles that they had on their pectoral flippers, and sometimes they have them on their flukes? A humpback is a lot bigger than a killer whale, but they don't swim very fast, so they have to be able to defend themselves in some way if they do come under attack. So say those, those barnacles come in uh, handy, I think, at some times. So how would we know which one is which? Hmm. Well, we look a little bit at behavior, but we can also look at other individual things. So I, to identify an individual animal in the killer whales, we look at this, the dorsal fin and the saddle patch, which is this gray area right kind of below and behind the dorsal fin. And if it has a lot of tears and damage in it, that's kind of our first clue that that individual is probably a transient killer whale. Uh, and a lot of scratches as well. For the resident type killer whales, remember these are the fish eaters, they tend to have very perfect dorsal fins for the most part, not too torn up or damaged. And sometimes their saddle patch will have a little bit of black in them like that. But say their behavior, whoops, so I'll go stay here for a second. Uh, their behavior is also a little bit different between those two. Uh, the Resident killer whales catch fish by making sounds into the water. So here I'll play a little bit of some um, K-pot sounds for you. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, hopefully you heard the little clicking sounds in there and kind of a bzzz sound. Um, that is echolocation. So they can use that to make clicky sounds into the water and find fish. And if they make some squeaky squawky sounds in the meantime or some whistles, the fish don't care. If they can even sense it, where are they going to go, right? The fish have to stay in the water. Uh, so they tend to hunt by using sound. The transient killer whales, the mammal hunters, hunt by listening to the sounds their prey makes. So remember those seals slap, slap, slapping at the surface or the sea lions leaping into the water and making a big splash? Hmm. Sometimes that is exactly the sound that the hunter is looking or listening for. And when they hear those splashy noises or maybe the uh, high-pitched chirps of dolphins or harbor porpoises, then they can point towards the food. So the behavior is different, the sounds are different. Um, I do have some sounds here as well from transient killer whales uh, when they're having a big social group and having a party. So I'll play you just a little bit of that as well. They do sound different. So even the, the way they make the sounds is uh, just a little bit different. And if you can hear the sound uh, with a hydrophone, an underwater microphone, sometimes you can tell just from that, say in the dark, uh, if it were a uh, resident or transient type killer whale in the area. Okay, so on these guys, males and females look very different. I didn't mention that on the humpbacks, but, um, or yes, I guess I did, the males and females look the same. Uh, but here as adults, the males have the big, tall dorsal fin. The females have a dorsal fin about half the size, and sometimes it kind of curves back a little bit. Uh, but the females, as you can tell from this picture, are also a little bit smaller than the males. They're a little bit shorter, and they don't weigh nearly as much. If a male weighs six tons, a female weighs about four. So um, they are not that much longer, but the males are much, much heavier. Uh, males also have large appendages. Uh, they've got big round pectoral flippers that look like giant paddles and their tail flukes are wide and bend down. Uh, so as adults, they have those very different characteristics. Now, if they were juveniles, and we couldn't see those growing yet, uh, for males at about 10 to 13 years old is when the dorsal fin starts to get tall. Uh, but say they're younger than that. Well, if we can see the belly patches, we can tell if it's a male or a female by the belly. So that's really nice with, uh, with the babies, say, or the, the little youngsters. Um, the males have this kind of longer, skinny white patch on the lower abdomen. And for the females, it's a rounder patch, usually with two, whoops, pardon me, I'm just gonna click there, um, usually with sort of two dots in it. And those are the mammary glands. That's where they would feed the babies from. And speaking of babies, they have their own unique coloration. Uh, instead of the, these patches being white, they're sort of a peachy, pinky color. Uh, and they gradually become white. So if we see uh, a little one that is really orangey in color, we know that it's a very newborn baby, not just by the size, but by that coloration as well. Now there's one very special little animal that is currently around the area. And that is, um, well, I can't even pronounce his name. Um, it means silver cloud, apparently, in one of the, uh, the First Nations languages. I'm not sure which one. Uh, and that's because this animal is silvery. This is T46B1B. What a big number. I'll just decipher this for you a little bit. This B means he is the second offspring of T46B1, who is the first offspring of T46B, who is the second offspring of T46. The numbering system is a little cumbersome, but we know who the great-grandmother of this little guy is. And so that's kind of a, a cool way of being able to trace the family. Uh, but he does have a, a nickname because of his very special color. Now, the really cool thing about this little guy is if you have any waves on the water, 
It could just be like a few white caps, one foot chop. He disappears. You can't even see him. It's really, really hard to see him anyway. So I think that he's a, a little bit of a secret weapon and uh, we wish him well. Uh, they were, uh, this family group was up near Prince Rupert in February. Some fishermen saw them and didn't quite know what was going on with that silvery calf that was uh, in the group. And then they were down by Seattle in early April and then up by Campbell River in mid-April. So um, they definitely move around. Uh, now with killer whales, they don't migrate. They definitely have a big range they circulate around in, but no migration. But just like you guys, kids like to play, right? Mostly the kids. The adults can do this too, but the kids really seem to get into it. Um, so I don't know, what kind of activity would you say these guys do? Gymnastics, maybe? Trampoline, tumbling? They can be a pretty energetic lot, like I say, especially the kids. So will my video work? Yeah, okay, here's a little video for you, a really short one. Okay, if you miss it, I'll play that little short one for you one more time. Oh. And then we'll just uh, kind of leave things with one other video. This one is a little bit longer. This is um, resident killer whales just kind of traveling along. All right, and that is it for what I prepared. Thank you all for joining in today. And uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to try to answer those for you. Yeah, there are a few, a few more questions now about the orcas. So someone asked earlier um, if they use echolocation like bats do. Um, echolocation. Yeah, they, they actually do. Um, we, we think they use it mostly to find food or to find objects uh, in the water, if you want to call it that way. Uh, but they might use it for navigating as well, which I think bats kind of do that. They use it, uh, you know, first of all, to find their food, but also to make sure they don't fly into something. And uh, I'm sure that uh, sometimes the clicks that we hear from the killer whales might be the same thing, just uh, understanding that underwater topography, if you like, uh, so that they don't swim into things because it can be pretty dark underneath the water and pretty murky at times mm. um and some a couple other people ask can what can other orcas be silvery like that baby one that you showed earlier yeah absolutely it's um we're not quite sure why it has that silver coloration if it is just a pigment uh and will that little animal get darker in color as he grows older he might uh, or is it um, actually a, a syndrome um, that might be a, a genetic disease? And if that is the case, it might limit the length of its life. Uh, but it has been seen before. It's just, it's not common at all. Uh, it's a really an unusual coloration, but there have been uh, whales that color before. And there's even been uh, albino whales. There is one in Russia that is an adult male now and he is all white and he's been nicknamed iceberg for the appropriate uh, reasons i think but uh, oh, cool. yeah right now this is the only one um that we're aware of anyways uh in the yeah. british columbia population and that includes all of the different populations of killer whales that are in bc there's four by the way um this is the only silver one that we know of okay now I'll just ask one more question because I think we're coming to the end. Um, someone asked what the T stands for in that name. T ah. E46 B2B. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good try. Was I, I don't know if I got it right. <laughs> um, the T stands for transient. So um, okay, that's what they thought. Yeah, 
when the um, the scientists started initially numbering them, they they gave um, that letter T to all of these ones that they decided were that type, uh, and um, now we also use the name Biggs killer whales, and that's in recognition of Dr. Michael Big, who was one of the early whale researchers. Mm. Sorry, someone else also just um, repeated a question they had asked earlier. Could you just repeat why the whales jump out of the water? <laughs> um, I think for the little ones, especially, this is mostly social. Uh, you imagine when some of you get together and you have a play date, everybody's kind of bouncing around. Well, when two, especially with transient killer whales, I find when two family groups meet up, they typically travel just with their mom and, and kids. So two family groups meet up and the kids are like, hey, cousins or friends. And, and then they're all like kind of jumping out of the water like popcorn. Uh, but usually the, the transient killer whales are really quiet. Uh, the other time when we can get quite a bit of jumping out of the water with them is during a hunt or just after a successful hunt. They seem to have a little um, celebration. For the resident killer whales, yeah, you know, I don't know. It, it just seems like they... They are um, just seem to enjoy it. It could be making a big noise again, communicating over a distance with others, um, maybe scaring the fish into the shallows, something like that. So, again, maybe many, many okay. reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Amazing. Whales, well, that was great. <laughs> great. Okay. Well, I'm glad that uh, a lot of you joined in and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully, it's not raining where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much, 